Good morning. First Corinthians 15 tells us in part, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we all will be changed. For this mortal body must put on immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you pray with me? God, we come before you this morning in reverence and awe, even in the midst of grief, as we observe the holy transition from this life to the next. For your witness, your child, Irvin Moyle, God, we know that you are our creator. You are the author of life. And life is a precious gift. And so we come before you today to commemorate and to honor a life that is precious to us. God, as we mourn this life that is no longer with us, we, we of course, are aching from a void that has been created in our heart. It is a void, Lord, that is given not because the love is gone, but because the love has been taken into your eternal presence, made and established in your kingdom forever and waiting to be shared in when we ourselves return to you. So God, we lift up our sadness and our grief to you this hour. Lord, we ask that you would comfort us in our pain and bring us an abundance of gentle healing mercies as we celebrate the life and the ministry of your son, your child, Irvin Moyle. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we do have some special music. See you.
Amen. As we gather to celebrate the life and the Christian witness of Irvin Moyle, let us read from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. Here begins the reading. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, is too high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as brilliant as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them has yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end, and I am still with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Psalms are, of course, one of my favorite books of the Bible. Not only are they deeply poetic, many of them originally being hymns and poems sung out to our God, but just as well, even outside of the the poetry and the beauty, they hold together with themselves so much profound truth. Of course, this Psalm 139 is no exception. It's filled line after line with this repeated truth given to us. See, what the psalm is getting at, if we were to have a thousand-mile overview of it, is that God knows all, and God sees all. He is present with us. You can use the fancy theological terms, omnipotent, God is all-knowing. You can say omnipresence, God is everywhere. You can put it the way Jesus himself referred to his Father, saying, my Father, who sees in secret, you can even recall that we, we tell kids this exact truth. God knows every hair on your head. We are to find great comfort in times like these whenever we read truths like those found in Psalm 139. For it is true that God saw Irvin in all times. It's true that God was present with him every single step from the time he accepted Christ in 1965 all the way to this past week. It is true, as verses 8 and 9 say, that we could go up to heaven, and of course God will be there, ready to welcome us home. But just the same, we could could be at the very threshold of death, and of course God would be there. God is present with us and was present with Irvin every step of the way whether he was out camping, watching the birds, or back home, he was never apart from our God. And we can see the presence of God in Irvin's life in a number of ways. 
whether it was how he volunteered here at First Christian Church, whether it was something that made him smile, that big, that wide smile with the dimples, whether it was how he loved his kids, making dad jokes and noises and even smiling and possibly making people a little scared as he joked with kids at the grocery store. Irvin, he walked with God. But even in times we wouldn't first expect, if we looked closely, if we looked closely, we'd see God walking with Irvin in those other times too. From what I understand, the way many people first got to know Irvin was through his work first. Not necessarily his day job, but understand he did not cease from working even while at home. I suspect he may have been the type of person who always had a project, who was always on the lookout for something to do, someone he could help. He was always seeking to showcase God's own glory through the work of his hands. When a couple of women lost their husbands and didn't know what to do when their car stopped or their AC didn't work anymore, there was Urban saying, don't worry about it ready to make it right. When Rory needed to learn how to drive, there was Irvin, doing things his way, making sure it got done right. In fact, if we know that God was with Irvin, and Irvin was teaching Rory how to drive, then I guess it follows that God was present in, in a single parking spot, and then the next, and then the next, and then the next, for about two hours at a time making sure, again, it was done right. Now, of course, I hardly think Irv would have said all his projects and all his work was him showcasing the world, the God he walked with, but the best ones never do. They might not even recognize themselves except for in small glimpses from time to time. But what we must know, what the Bible declares to be true, is that God watched over Irvin every step of the way. God poured his love into Irvin, and he poured it right back out into others, sometimes with words, sometimes with fuzzy feelings, but most often with diligence, with hard work, making sure the job got done and got done right. We have seen that. We have known that. We have seen God work in and through Irvin. It was God walking with Irv when he went to every single game. It was God walking and working through Irv when he wanted to just get home and relax, but instead he found himself outside having a blast, throwing the ball around. The psalm is clear and it's directly applicable. God saw Irv. He walked with Irv. He guided Irv all along the way. Every righteous deed, everything once broken that got repaired, that was God employing Irvin for the work of his kingdom. But now there is a second truth in this psalm that I want to draw our attention to just as well. See, this psalm about God overseeing us with love no matter where we go or what we do, it is a comfort, but it is startling at times, isn't it? Because if we really understand the psalm, we understand God sees all of it. When the psalm says all of it, guess what? It means all of it. He has seen us at our worst and at our best. Can you imagine that? The God that loves you without limit is the same God who has seen you in the exact moments you wish he didn't. This teaches us something about God. This teaches us that God's love is mature. It's not a puppy love. It's not a short-lived fling. God's love sees you, warts and all, bad days and all, and still profoundly, deeply cherishes you, loves you. It's this kind of mature love that I know Irvin came to. But God's presence with him over the course of so many years, imperfectly but continually guide him and direct him and help him every step of the way. He became understanding as God continued to sanctify him and to grow him. 
Irvin did not let the love of God stay the same throughout the years. He let it mature. He let it deepen within him. He did it so that it, it would resemble God's own mature love whenever he went out and he cared for others. It's this kind of mature, selfless love that sees people and chooses to help, not because who they're helping deserves it or has earned it or anything of the like, but instead, the love that we see in God and the love I suspect that many of us have stories of seeing in Irv, it is a love that reaches out, that helps others, that cares for folks, simply because that's who it is. That's who he is. It can't be kept to yourself. It has to be poured out into others. It has to find someone to help. It has to keep going. The love of God is a love we get to rejoice in because we saw it in Irvin. And we know it was reflected back to him in his final days. And we know it is the same love that has now called him home. We have a God who knows all and who sees all and loves us all the more for it. We have a God with such depth and such care to his love. Love that often shows up not in big flowery statements or kind gestures, but daily. God's love is a love that daily shows up, does the real work, helps us, watches us, guides us. So let us celebrate that our God did, in fact, walk with Irvin, that our God poured his love out into Irvin, that Irvin was so ready to pour that same love out to others. Even as we grieve, we must understand it is born out of this same love. Understand this, our grief is a form of worship. It's uplifting what we have seen, what we have known, what we give thanks for. Saddened because it is temporarily gone from us, but comforted at the same time, at peace at the same time. Because we know that he has returned to the author of this love. This time, we have a second song for us.
Amen. At this time, if you would, please do spend a moment in reverence, silence, and in prayer. And then as you feel called, come forward for the viewing. For those following us to the graveside, we do have some extra time, and so I want to encourage you to make use of the fellowship hall as you feel called. But now receive this benediction. May the love of the Father, the Lordship of the Son, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit gladden your heart and bring peace to your soul this day and all days. Amen. Thank you.